Hey guys, Dancy2, back with more Let's Play Rusteteer. Last time, we fucked up. And now we have traveled back to the past. Along with our entire horde of items, equipment, levels, characters. Well, not characters, we have to reacquire our characters. But everything else there, in order to, uh, make sure that this timeline goes a little bit more smoothly. We had just beaten the crap out of Charm. So now that she can be our friend again, because fuck it, it makes sense in some universe. <laughs> and because this is our first time down here, I should get a pot again. Also, she didn't drop booze roll, which is weird, because I swore that that was a guaranteed drop for her. Here, Louie, job well done. Yep, guaranteed pot. I right, got my vase, and we're good to go. First day complete. Also, as you can see there, I got a shell necklace. That is a bit of an expensive item if you can't see down there. Um, got another inkwell. That's good. That's our romantic cape. And I got a beef bowl, which is a pretty good random drop. Be pretty damn good, honestly. That being said, we got nothing to buy with, so... We got zero money, so we're gonna get rolling. Okay, so yeah, that should just be her telling us that we're gonna pay it off week by week. So, no real point in sitting there and watching that cutscene again. Yeah. Ah, counters by the window, yep, showcase items, we know that. What's my merchant level at? More items store switch. Okay, yep. We just got to the point with more items. It's one of the things you guys missed in that episode I lost, unfortunately. Uh, hold on a second. I need knives. Because I need her to come in and do her thing. I don't want to rush things too fast, otherwise I might lose some people, but, uh... I should be okay as long as I just play it by the rules. Put that shield in the window for Louie. I didn't pick up, uh, I didn't get to the other helmets, unfortunately, that's right. Oh well. All's well, that'll hopefully end well. Yeah, if you can't tell by our- Oh! Ca nope, Calyu's here first. It makes more sense. Get him out of the way. Although, the problem with Calyu is, I don't have a slime liver anymore. And I don't think I have any dried lizards, either. So yeah, if I don't have that stuff, we could be in a little bit of trouble with him, but oh well, he's not really that important in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, I do want to get him on my side sooner than later, but uh, he's not like Charm, I'm not going to make a... He's not wholly important for my gameplay strategy here. So yeah, he's just going to put his order in like before, nothing really changed. Uh, ah, sweet. Punch it up for Louie. At least I don't, I don't think I had my, uh... If I had all of his items, then the cutscene would have changed, but I hope I didn't, because then you guys missed it, and then that would make me sad. Alright, and we got our ability to get our store bigger, which, seeing as how we just busted our payment in two item cell, uh, I think we might actually get a, uh, we might actually get our store upgrade. Boom! Straight in the face. There you go, Tear. And double your payment this week. So yeah, once you reset even once, it's typically a whole lot easier to make your payments. Because obviously you're selling much more expensive things, you're getting more of a profit. Just, just in general, things are a whole lot easier. It is possible to do it in one week. 
It's very difficult, however. Just making solid 10k each single sale. High fives all around. Unless when you're involved. And then I'm just like, eh. Okay, so. Here's the plan. We're actually gonna take a pit stop for a second. Town Square. We're asking the plaza. We've already seen this cutscene. Chapel. You're from a finance company. We've already seen that scene. Right, so what we're gonna want to do is buy a couple cloth capes. I'm gonna buy one of those. See if I can get it on Louie. That would be nice. He uses scarves. I think he's one of the only characters in the game who uses scarves. Okay, that's all very expensive. Except unless I can. Antique feeling, tile floor. How much is resort? Ah. Uh, well, I guess I'm, I'm gonna get plank walls. So this will be nice for certain things. And what I really want to do is go over here and fuse me up a manta cape. I got an inkwell from that last little outing, and it's a nice little thing I can sell. Okay, so you got all your stuff out of stock. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and buy that. I can easily make up the difference. Uh, this is... yep, yeah, it's late, so... Time period. I don't actually know all the cutscenes by their starting remarks. I just know generally what it's gonna be. So, helmet. Turn on that immediately. Put that charm out there. Hope that charm comes in. See, I put your name out there. Girl, come say hi. I wanna be friends again. Just like the old times! There we go, now our floor matches our walls. Everything looks a little bit more homey. And because of that, um... I'm surprised she hasn't given us this tutorial yet, but... There's, if you're at all familiar with D&D, you know about Chaos, uh, uh, Law and Order, and... Or, law, it, it's uh, Law and Chaos and Good and Evil alignment. So that's basically what we've got here. We've got Light and Dark and Gaudy and Plain. So, certain people will like certain things, and they will come your, in your shop because of that. I usually try and make... I usually try and achieve true neutral. Uh, just quite, kind of hit that e equilibrium. But for right now, we're gonna sit on the plain side of things, even though our, uh, shop is actually selling really expensive items. So, you know, case raw, so raw. Oh, Charm's not in yet. Probably gonna come in tonight. No, I don't. Shut up, or get out. Oh, of course you want that. Whatever. Won't say no to us. No! The price is what it is. Buy it, or get out. Oh, well, we take that? Yeah! A little bit high, but whatever. Oh, you're gonna piss me off, aren't you? Yeah, you go home. What's up, Louie? Ah, uh, he saw the old man take the scarf. Damn it. Sure thing. Sure thing, buddy. So, we are gonna go ahead and... We're actually gonna throw, throw a pure edge over here. Just in case, just in case. Put the iron spear over here too. And put a push plate on that. Right, come on, Charm. I know you're out there. Damn it! A weapon. What you, sir, need is a night blade. Oh, 
not sure of that. I might head back out with Louie. I wanted to do a lot of charm, but honestly, I don't like her defense. Like, it took me like five seconds of playing with Louie to be like, I remember how good this guy is. <laughs> like, I forgot, basically, I had forgotten what it was like to actually be able to take a hit and still move. Because charm has the durability of a wet paper bag. Like, that's her one downside. She's very good if you can move with her. But if you can't, it's like, ow, my face. Okay, nothing new? Nothing new. Ah, oh, damn it, today's Sunday, isn't it? Yep, today's Sunday. Adventure Guild's closed. Alright, well, we're gonna go out. Uh, I think... Yeah, Louie's looking for food. I've already seen that cutscene. Gonna buy those two for Louie, just to get it out of the way. Damn, it still won't have that one item I want unlocked. Grab the resort wallpaper, and I believe it is. Is that for stone floor or tile floor? I think it's tile floor. Now that I think about it. And get a barrel counter. I'm gonna set up my shop the way I like it. Resort wallpaper. Yep, it was tile floor. Oh, I can't change the tables yet, damn it. Dear, when do I get the ability to change tables? Fusion rank 2. Not for a while then, damn. I think they would have given that to me by now. Anyway, yeah, this is just kind of like, you're at, uh, you're on like a, I don't know. I, I like the look of it. Hey, Charm. It's like a beachside resort. That's the words I'm looking for. Let me say, yeah, Charm's in our shop now. Shouldn't be too much longer before she starts looking for stuff. Piece of armor. Uh, here's the question. Can you equip? Okay, cool. The game, because she's joined us once, the game has acknowledged that she is in fact a character. Um, until she, until your characters join you at least one time, the, uh, if you try and equip them, they won't actually get equipped. Uh, there's one character in particular that this is kind of important for, but, uh... I'm gonna give you a, di give you a discount, because I'm not sure, uh, where your budget is sitting right now. And I'd rather just get that on you, honestly. But yeah, since she's been our she's been in our party one time before, even if it was in her deep previous loop, uh, she's kind of as a character, even if even if we don't have her card yet. There you go, old man. Give me a high five. Ah, uh, sure. I'm gonna have to go out and buy him, but whatever. What you got? Ah, good old dagger. No, you can't. I'm just burning the money. Laziness. That much. Restock on my equipment at some point. I'm surprised she came in this early. Charm's not normally up at this time of the day. So close is actually worth quite a bit now that I look at it. I was just trying to burn money earlier. Uh, golden scales, come over here. Put you up front. Like I said, that's kind of my money capsule. Because, yeah, 25,000 is nothing to sneeze at! Look at that thing. Look at that thing! It's beautiful! Put my 
face down here. Just playing a lot of catch up right now. And yep, there we go. Charm should give us our card. Yep, card, check. We'll take her out for a spin next time again. A weapon again. You know, I, I'm not made of night swords. You can have a steel sword this time around. Ah, damn it. Ran a bit of a risk there. Well, it was worth it. Or it wasn't worth it, but yeah. Wouldn't be worth it if it worked out. Damn right it does. Really, you would want this. Now that I think about it, I think I can use that for a fusion, but whatever. I'll take the money now. Oh, you would. You're gonna have to pay top dollar. Okay. It's too good of an item for me to let go cheap. Charm. And the over there. But yeah, if you can't tell, we just made up a whole lot of time. Sure thing. Treasure. For you, girl. I think this will work best. There you go. We can work. We can work with each other. Something metal, huh? Uh, Freight armor is metal. Yeah, Freight Armor's actually cheaper than what, than what I remember it was. And again, I guess that's how everything is. It's just like, oh, it seems so expensive at the time, and then when you get higher stuff, it's like, oh, it's so cheap. And then you reset time, and all of a sudden you have $123,000 at the end of the day four. What the fuck? <laughs> Holy crap. I'm just blowing this, man. Slash and burn, baby. Slash and burn. We're good for a couple weeks. Yeah, I think we're good for like three weeks. That being said, can't rest on our haunches. Uh, what was my plan? I had a plan, but I can't remember what it was. Alright, we are going to go ahead and go to the Adventurers Guild. I'm going to talk about some things. You still don't have a good dagger, do you? Really? You can't take the spiked armband? That's a really weird, uh, oddly specific thing. But yeah. We go to the Jade Way. I... Why didn't the other one open? Huh. That's weird. Hope that's not a problem. Yeah. Oh, okay, I know why. It's because it, it technically counts as, like, story progress. So, yeah, your progress in the dungeons, uh, isn't removed, but, um... The dungeons themselves have to be unlocked, like, normal, from what I can assume. Jade Way unlocks automatically after you get Bluey, so that's why we had it for the work go. Ow! That was a bit dumb, but yeah, you can knock those bombs around. Anyway, what else we going to talk about um, is games I've been playing recently, or rather one game in particular, because uh, it surprised me. Which was, I finally got around to getting up off my butt and kind of... I, I, I don't know if you'll say getting up off my butt, because I really didn't care enough. The, the problem... Ugh. 
not the problem. I finally got my hands on and played through Kingdom Hearts 3D. Now, I've I've been relatively into the Kingdom Hearts series since it's basically since its creation. My first game was Chain of Memories, and I still hold that it's probably the best in the series, in my opinion, but that's my opinion. I know it's not popular amongst most people, but, you know, that's... I, I, I can understand why people don't like it. It's, it. it's the combat mechanics. People aren't a big fan of them. I understand. I really do. It takes a little bit to get used to, but I feel like they work out in the end. Oh, the XP game is tough. But yeah, ju just saying that is enough to probably get me in a lot of people's... for a lot of people to dismiss my uh, opinion, but... On to Dream Drop Distance itself, I actually was pleasantly surprised with the game. I found myself heavily enjoying it for the first time... probably in a... in, in, in definitely like 10 years now. I have enjoyed a Kingdom Hearts game. And it is so nice to say that. Now... Like, I, I, I think everyone is kind of in agreement that the three games, um, the, the big three, Days, Birth by Sleep, and Coded, all have issues. But they all have one same issue, which is they did absolutely nothing for the series. And, you know, 3D fixes that. 3D does something for the series, it doesn't just screw around, it comes away not, it not being empty-handed. And probably the probably the best thing, and the thing I would compliment it on more than anything else, is it actually develops our main characters. Holy fucking shit. You know, something that we haven't had since fucking Chain of Memories, once again, my big problem with Kingdom Hearts 2 is I love the combat. But the problem is that's only half the game, in my opinion. As an or as an action RPG, you have to have that RPG part. And Kingdom Hearts 2 is barely an RPG. You know, in terms of, like, character and story, it just kind of exists. Which, if you understand, like, the history behind Kingdom Hearts, you kind of understand why. Because, like, th there was no, like, they were not expecting Kingdom Hearts to be the success that it was. They kind of just pulled Cage 2 out of its, out of their ass. So, honestly, I understand why. Let's just zip one out of here. So yeah, I understand why there's no character development in KH2. Doesn't make it any better. But... At the end of the day, I don't like Kingdom Hearts 2, even though a lot of people do, for that reason. Dream Drop Distance, on the other hand, I found myself incredibly enjoying, not only because of the story and the character, which I'll get into the story. The story, the story deserves a little bit of special attention. But yeah, not only in how the characters were developed, but also in the combat. So, you know, it's not, it doesn't have the days problem where it's like we just kind of reverted back to Kingdom Hearts 1 combat and how not good it was. But it also isn't just solely reliant on the combat, like, uh... Basically all the other Kingdom Hearts games were. I was trying to think of one in particular, I'm like, no, it's pretty much all of them. Dream Drop Distance, KH2, Coded... Basically everything after KH2 is just kind of like, yeah, we're, we're, we're basically a beat-em-up that that's called an RPG. Because there's very little role-playing game involved in this, aside from leveling up and the stupid... Stupid things I'll get into in a minute. But, yeah, 3D... You know, ju just, just, like, one thing, one very small thing. I didn't go through the game because I wanted to just finish the game. I went through the game because I was genuinely interested in seeing how each character would interact with the world that they were coming up on and what they would develop with them, which I think is really what pushed me through uh, the first two Kingdom Hearts games, that being Chain of Memories in the original. And what I ultimately felt was lacking more than anything else in, in Kingdom Hearts 2, because... In the first two games, it was like the characters, because, you know, Disney movies and whatnot, they're all very integral part of our childhood, being, you know, the, being the generation that we are. So, it, it felt like, it, it, it felt like watching the characters go to these worlds, it felt like what we felt like going and watching those movies. They left an impact on the characters like the movies would leave an impact on us. Um, and that was just severely lacking in Kingdom Hearts 2. But now, but in Dream Drop Distance, that's all back. Because it's not the same worlds again, it's different, and they're actually putting forth an effort to characterize our characters, Riku especially. Which, uh, 
yeah, he was a far more fun character to play than uh, Sora was. But I, I don't I don't feel like that's the game's fault. I think that's just how the game was designed. I think like that I think that was a purposeful decision to make him more fun to play as. Damn it, no slime water. Um, I really should reset, but I kind of want to keep going. How many items do I have? 17. Yeah, we're gonna keep going. Like that's the wrong thing to keep going. Nope, nope. This is bad. I need noms. Do I have any noms? I don't have any noms. But where was I with the whole King of Hearts thing? Uh, but yeah, j just in general, okay, I went over characters. Story. Story was the next big thing. I was told coming into this, to this game that the story was dumb. And don't get me wrong, the story is dumb. But that's Kingdom Hearts. The story is kind of... Like, when you say Kingdom Hearts, that, that that's kind of the point. The story is dumb. It's giant crossover fanfiction feeder. What the fuck do you want? Honestly, I felt like the story was actually fairly well written for the stupidity that it was. Um... Like, everything made sense, even though, like, like in the context of the game itself, not, not including any of the other games before it, everything made sense. Um, if we, if we count the other games in the series, then no, nothing makes fucking sense. The whole time travel mechanic is dumb, where they have to go into, like, 15 minute long cutscenes to go over why they can travel through time, when we've done it before in the past, far easier! Timeless River was a thing, guys! You don't have to be like, oh, we have to do all this complicated shit to tra travel through time. No, we've traveled through time before. It's okay. We can do it. It's a thing. It's been established in this universe. But, you know, whatever is whatever. You know, like, and, and honestly, like, maybe it's because I knew about the story coming into it, but, like, I was disappointed. I was expecting something way dumber than what I got. So, yeah, at the end of the day, the story was kind of like, Huh. That was a thing. It wasn't anywhere near as dumb as advertised. Kinda of disappointed. But whatever. I do like the fact that people are kind of finally coming to realize, like, yeah, Sora's kind of been, like, inadvertently, like, one of the worst people on the face of the planet. Like, he, he he's not in on it, but what people have kind of caused him to do is pretty fucking horrible. And I'm glad somebody finally, you know, caught on to that, because that's what I've been saying since Kingdom Hearts 2, that, like, he's a bit of a Mary Sue. Like, le like let's not cut corners here. He really is. Now, that being said, that's not necessarily an, an avoidable thing, because main characters are Mary Sue's. That's what makes them main characters. But, you know... He's a little bit more than most, let's leave it at that. Oh no. Watch your back, girl. Oh, we should be good for a level up. Yep, alright, we keep moving. But, uh, enough of the praise. Because this game is not perfect. I still hold Chain of Memories to be slightly better than this game. Uh, and, and for two reasons. Now, let's hope I can remember both of them, because I know what one of them is. I actually. They're kind of like two sides of the same coin here, which is your progression in the game. And more importantly, my my biggest my biggest compliment is at the same time my biggest complaint. What is that? It's the dream eaters, which is your allies and your enemies. Now, that by itself is actually a really good idea because it causes something to happen, which is it guarantees that the enemy AI will be good because it has to be the same as your allied AI. Or rather, it would not have worked if it wasn't good. Luckily, it is good, so it works. Uh, they do good AI because they share the same AI, they both have good AI, and at the end of the day, it all works out in the end. Now, the problem is, all of your ability- <laughs> I just threw out an insect trap to get an insect trap. God damn it, game! The problem is, your abilities are also tied to them. 
How they level up is how you get your abilities in the game. Leveling up yourself does nothing. You're on a single level up- Ooh, I need that. I need that. You are on a single level up path. So you can't actually, like, do anything else. Um, there, there's no, like, pick your- pick your route at the beginning of the game. Leveling up doesn't get you different abilities. They all come from either the story or your allies, which kind of blows. Or rather, that wouldn't be bad. If not for how the game decided to implement their experience feature in this regard, which is, of course, Face Touching Simulator 2012. Not to be confused with Face Touching Simulator 2013, or the upcoming Face Touching Simulator 2016, if I remember correctly. I don't remember when Fire Emblem Fates is coming out. I think it's 2016. But yeah. Before Pokemon and me, before Fire Emblem Fates, we had this. And that's how we decided to have our guys level up. Because, fuck it. Oh, and I remember what my second complaint is, but... That, that pretty much wraps up my primary complaint. Is like, at the end of the game, it's just like... I, I hit a certain point where I'm like, okay. If anyone at all is familiar with the end game of, Green Dro of Kingdom Hearts, you know there are two abilities that you need to survive. Those are second chance and once more. Combined together, they allow you to survive... Um, any combo and any ma any uh, single attack with at least one HP. It's basically the Pokemon Sturdy. It's the ability from Pokemon called Sturdy, just in general. Uh, do I want to lose anything here? Let's just eat the apple. Oh, Night Shield! Definitely worth eating that apple. Yeah, the items in every area do tend to scale a little bit with your merchant level, but not entirely. I think they have a range they can go to. But yeah, those two abilities are what inevitably caused me to grind up in order at the end game. Luckily, I, I picked the, what I what I assume is the path of least resistance with both. And it all worked out in the end. I beat the game, had some fun doing it, and realized that Riku is way more fun to play as than Sora. Because Sora does not get anywhere near the abilities that Riku does. Like, he is, like, from an endgame perspective, he is seriously just hamstringed, just straight from the word go. Like, he doesn't get half the, half of the survivability abilities, or just the offensive ones that Riku gets. Hey, Reginald. Uh, just to wrap this little tangent up really fast. Um, my other main complaint with the game is actually its main gimmick, which is the fact that you, every, like, 15, between, like, 5 and 15 minutes, depending on how much you're pausing, depending on what you're doing, uh, you will be switching between your two main characters. Now, unlike most people, I, I didn't write this, write this, uh, little gimmick off to from the word go. The reason for this is because what I thought they were implementing with it is a way to do drop-in and drop-out gameplay, something that Nintendo has been doing for quite some time with their handheld consoles, and something I figured that Square Enix would do since they were on the console. The problem is, I can't save on the drop screen. This combined with the fact that this game for some reason feels it necessary to have... Um... To still have save points in this day and age with a handheld game, and completely no quick save feature at all baffles my mind as to why they would do this. Even Persona Q realized, yeah, we need a quick save feature because j just because of how like it, like if you look up and you understand how handheld game is handheld gaming is kind of done in Japan, you you kind of understand what the deal is. It's the, the general idea is it's like it's a 15 minute experience while you're on the bus or the train or something going to work or school. So, if you understand that, you kind of understand why, like, quick saving would is, is an important thing. So, why in hell do we not even have quick saves? We, like, we don't even have... And, and why the hell do we have save points? In a handheld game, if I'm not in a combat, I should be able to save at any time. Like, I, I can understand if this isn't... if this is a console game. If it's a console game, save points are fine. But handheld games? No. No, that's not okay. Anyway, Louie's praying for food. Time to go home. Okay, we need to see this again. <laughs> Is alcohol yummy? 
It's stack of barrels. But yeah, and I, I felt like the drop system would be a nice way to go around this, or it's like you can drop, like, if you need to stop, you can, because you can drop at any time. You can literally drop continuously, just like drop from one character to another and then immediately back to the other character if you don't want to interrupt their story. You can just go back. You can just go back to them immediately. You don't get any bonuses with that, but the bonuses are kind of negligible to begin with. Um... So I thought, like, what they would do is, when you were on that drop screen, you could save there. Because that would be a really easy and fun, easy way to do it. Even if it was just a quick save. Even if it was just a save that got deleted when you reloaded your game. Speaking of which, I need to remember to save. But, obviously, because uh, my throat's getting tired because I'm on a bit of a tangent here. So, I'm going to finish up and then we're going to save and I'm going to take a break. And I might come back and do another small recording session later. Whatever. Um... But yeah, that's what I thought they would do, but they didn't. It, it's literally just... You, you get to stop and save. You just get to stop. No saving. Saving is forbidden. Ugh. It's dumb. And I really don't... Like, that... that just adding a quick save to the drop menu. Like, j just as one of the little options. Like, zero drop points. Quick save. So simple. So easy. Would it would have been would have made the whole drop system actually worth it, but barrels, but barrels. They couldn't do it. They didn't do it for some reason, and it it just it, it soured the whole experience for me because I had to go and hunt down save points on multiple occasions. And when I, when I'm on a handheld with a limited battery life, like let's face it, the 3DS is not a battery powerhouse. Because I'm, I'm fairly certain they're still using the same battery that they had with the GBA SP, because the damn thing... Like, it, it takes the same amount of time to charge, which is for fucking ever, which is three hours. And, you know, every generation it's been slowly losing its battery life. Because obviously better graphics and stuff. It, it might not be the same battery, but, you know... They haven't made significant improvements to their battery in quite some time. You know, you've got that limited battery, you've got limited time to play if you're on the bus or something. You need a save point. You, you, you need a way to save on the fly. You can't just be like, Nah, uh, I don't want it. I, I, you, you can't just, you can't just have save points and no way to quick save. That's, that's my, and that's my speech here. That's my public service announcement to take away from this. That and barrels. But we know about the barrels. Anyway, woman trying to make food. Um, we're in our cloth cape. Uh, I think I need to grab some books. Need to grab a few books just just to have in stock. <laughs> uh, a book on childbearing behavior. Its advice to single-handedly reintroduce torture to society. Nonfiction work about two sisters and their travel. Shouldn't this have been released sooner? This is a joke based on, uh, there's another game called Chantelise, um, that the translation team also did, and it was de also developed by, uh, I, I believe this, um, the same team that made this easy game station, because of the fact that it actually... 10,000 picks? Oh, fuck yes. Because, uh, it uses the same graphics, actually. It uses almost entirely the same graphics. It's it's basically, like, Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time in terms of just straight conversion. And a lot of the weapons and stuff we have in this game are also, uh, part of that game. Anyway, for some reason, they off-center my table, which pisses me off. Okay, there we go. But yeah, all my stuff, now we have an upgraded store. I'm gonna fill this place up and see you guys next time when we will get back on the selling train. Hopefully. And hopefully Kai won't come in and be like, wham, 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 because I don't have a slime lever. Actually, no, I do! I was missing the, uh... I was missing the charred lizard, if I remember correctly. No dead like Kai, yeah, I was missing the charred lizard. My bad. So yeah, we actually have all this stuff. I think. What, what was the last thing he wants? Dare, 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 girl. I need your help. Um, that's any worse. Charred lizard bat. Oh yeah, bat legs. Pfft, I got them by the bucket full. 
But yeah, next time I will set out some goodies and we will get back to the fun and games. And by fun and games, I mean, of course, selling things. Yeah, look at all them bat wings. Actually, I don't have a lot. I might want to pick up a few next time I go down. Anyway, next time. See you guys then.